Hello, my name's Harry Rogers, and today I thought I'd tell you a little bit about horse brasses. And I have a few to show you, and I thought perhaps also I could show you a little bit about how they were made, and the different types, <laughs> and a bit about the history of them. It's a fascinating area. The observant amongst you may have noticed one towards the roof of my leather workshop. I'll show you, because it's quite an early one. Because horse brasses actually started off around about the 1850s, uh, in the UK there was a the great exhibition which promoted the arts and from there it seems that quite a few horse brasses were being made and I've got a nice lunge rain across the sort of ceiling in my leather workshop so I'll show you that next. Well just above my drying rail in my workshop I have an early lunge rain. So there's a very long lead for training horses and this one's rather nice. It's got lots of studs along it. Uh, it's got hearts, circles, triangles, little suns. You can actually, surprisingly, still buy these. I guess you've got a situation where <laughs> one farmer or carter, they, they had their studs and then someone else thought, actually, let's do one better and let's start having brasses. So you began to see like little brass, they're about three and a half inches by three and a half inches, very roughly, uh, brasses would start to appear. And here's quite a nice little example of one. And they became very popular. So, so from about 1850s, they started to be seen coming around, but really by 1880, these horse brasses were becoming quite common. And things like you'd have horse parades and they'd actually give out brasses to the winner and things like that. So people start decorating horses. There was concern about whether horses were being overladen and you know the weight of brasses as well. So some of the early animal welfare groups actually did raise concerns. I'll show you an example of a cast brass because the early brasses were cast and they're quite a lot heavier than the later brasses. The later brasses were stamped with big fly presses, but these cast ones are weigh quite a bit more. So I'll, I'll show you a cast one next. So here are a couple of cast horse brasses, and they're far heavier. They're sort of thicker, more weighty. These are both maker ones. So we've got one from Ulampton, and we've got one from Romsey. I rather like the maker's names on them. You can see that a lot of them have, just on the back here, these like casting pins. They're actually called gets, and there's sort of different views about these. But one of the sort of ideas is that they they used to come out about an inch and a half from the casting, and the idea was you could then hold it in a vice to file up and clean up the brass. Now these cast ones would have been sand cast and if you look at the back of this one not only can you see the gets but you've got like a rough surface of a sand cast and it may be sometimes the gets were used as sprues as well for the actual casting now if you want to see how these were sand cast i have put up films on sand casting where i'm casting tools in aluminium same idea for making these but this is quite a nice weighty example of an early horse brass and it's got a nice little edging to it as well which is probably sort of enhanced with a file afterwards. This one was off a larger piece of leather work. It's actually hinged, it's quite fancy really but again behind it, you may just be able to see that on camera, there's a casting pin just behind that brass. That leather seen <laughs> better days. So these are the earlier cast brasses. Now, they were obviously quite expensive to make. A lot of them were probably initially made by blacksmiths and such like. And then as horse brasses became more common, they sort of centralised and they were made in some of the big centres like Birmingham and Sheffield, etc. But as time went on, some of the horses got so laden with these rather heavy ones some of the animal welfare groups like the early RSPCA, etc., started to raise concerns. I'll now show you an example of a stamped horse brass, because after the cast horse brasses, 
stamped horse brasses became quite common. Now stamped horse brasses became popular from about the 1880s and they were made on a large, like a fly press. He'd have his huge steam engine, lever belting, driving a big wheel and there'd be a huge press. But you'll notice that a stamped horse brass is a lot thinner. So this one's only about a sixteenth or so of an inch thick. And this particular design is called a beehive because it does look like an early beehive. <laughs> I remember as a child seeing this type and thinking it looked a bit like a Chinese hat. So quite the fun. Sometimes they had little holes and ribbons were popped in these. But it's a lot lighter in terms of weight. That's a lot, lot lighter. So these were produced, you know, in huge numbers because it would be literally feeding a, a sheet of metal and out would pop a stamped brass. So they were a lot cheaper to produce and they were were produced for all sorts of occasions. Now another kind of popular horse brass was one called the Terret. I always used to call these as a child, I used to see my dad collecting them, I used to call them swingers because they swing like that and probably kept the flies away from the poor horse. I mean here's one an example, it's um, a coronation one, 1911 George V. So quite good fun, quite a heavy one actually, nice little cast crown and it's got long live the king. So they were produced for all sorts of things like the arrival of st steam engines which probably seems a bit odd now as they took over and um, coronations obviously, famous exhibitions, all these sorts of things got modelled into horse brasses and there are lots and lots of different types. I'll show you a couple of other general brasses that I have because I think they're rather nice just in their own right. This is rather a handsome one, it's quite weighty and that's because it's a constant coil of lovely thick veg tan leather at the back. So it's very much like the leather I use today, proper veg tan leather and this is quite a long coil actually. It's got a nice brass there, it's got some studs so that will have hung off the horse, poor old horse, that would be quite a weight. But it is an attractive piece and it's got these saddler's crease lines, a bit like the ones I put on belts. Nice traditional sort of side fare. I have another one which is a long one and that's this one. So a nice buckle at the top end, skived down leather there, nicely stitched and a, a spring hook at the base. Quite shiny, you can see a horse coming towards you with that, they'd show up, wouldn't they? It's quite good fun. And I have a couple of others. So I have a couple of makers. So these would have been attached by the saddlers or by the cart makers to harness. And they're quite good fun. Tell a bit of history. It'd be quite good fun to research those names and see if they're still around. So these are down in, obviously in Cornwall, but quite good fun. Of course, along with the arrival of the motor car, horses ceased to be used so much. And sadly, horse brasses also became less and less common. So from about the 1920s, you really didn't see many new ones. Nowadays, of course, I think most people would associate horse brasses with what they see in the local pub. There's quite a few pubs have horse brasses hanging up along the beams and they, they do make a nice decoration. You can obviously get modern reproductions. Uh, you can still find the old ones on auction sites and what have you. They don't go for very much, but I think they're quite nice. They tell a little bit of, sort of social history and they do look quite good. You know, rather nice, really, all in all. So there you are, a little bit about horse brasses. I hope you found that interesting. I like seeing them in my leather workshop. It seems a sort of suitable place to have a few little horse brasses hanging up and it makes the walls look a bit more cheerful. And I have a sort of personal attachment to them because my dad did collect them. And so it's nice to, you know, think of happy times with him when I see them there. Okay then, thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.